Hey guys, just letting you guys know, today, February 14th, is 8-Bit Day. For new announcements, including new shows, videos, and the launch of 8-Bit's new Patreon, check out We Are 8-Bit on all the socials. Now, on to the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the House of Mario, the award-winning Nintendo podcast on the 8-Bit Collective, and the doors to episode 82 are open. I'm your host, Drew Agnew, and joining me today is Bobby, the Nintendo guru. How are you going, dude? I am awesome. Thank you very much for having me on, Drew. I appreciate this. This is an exciting day to have me on, put it that way. So It is, yeah. yeah. It was very uh, very well-timed. I'll, I'll Perfect. Put it that way. Perfect. You're like, hey, I, it might be a little too late, but can you do it tomorrow? And I'm like, uh, yeah, just, just time to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those who don't know who you are, aren't aware of your YouTube channel and all the great content you put out, uh, let us know all about it. Well, first off, I don't appreciate you lying to the people. Great is not. <laughs> that's not That's not a word that we use around here. Um, mediocre. Okay, at best. No. Um, Bobby, the Nintendo Guru. Um, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Nintendo Guru, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Nintendo Gurus. I have like five different podcasts I do. Um, I also stream on Twitch. Um, I do it all, man. I do everything I can, so as much Mm. as I can possible. How how do you keep up with five podcasts? I've been meaning to ask you that. That is a lot of uh, stuff to think about, like... I'm thinking about what I'm going to do each week on this show, and I've got one. You're like, all right, I've got to do this on this one. Yeah. That, that one, you, like, how do you keep up with it? Well, number one, the, the the advantage is is none of my shows are alike, so that makes it a little bit easier. Mm. But it's not, it's not easy, man. I was looking at today, <laughs> no. and I was like, because someone came to me today, and they were like, "Hey, man, I heard you started a new podcast." I'm like, "Who are you talking to?" Like, <laughs> no, I didn't start a new podcast. I'm like, I got five I'm doing now, and when I listened to them out, and I looked, I was like. I must be a madman. Like, what is wrong with me? So, you know, but it's 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 all good. I'm I'm I can't complain. Hmm. Uh, and uh, what would be your favorite Nintendo game out of uh, the many generations of Ooh. so hardware? My favorite video, my favorite Nintendo game of all time. I'll give you I'll give you a couple of answers. Um, okay. Because I can't do one. Um, but but my favorite, like if you were to say, what is your favorite video game of all time? Uh, that would be the the Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I have a coaster of it that I'm showing you now. Mm. Um, Mike Tyson's Punch Out is my favorite Nintendo game ever. Um, it's my favorite game ever. Um, just because I had so much history with that game and beating Mike Tyson at the time when that all, you know, when that was a big thing. Um, so that's, that's hands down. But like, as far as series goes, Zelda's probably my favorite, um, franchise from Nintendo, just because yep. of the idea of like, every game is, is somewhat different, but it's very familiar as well. Um, and they always do some really, really good things with that. Every every iteration, they they tend to do something surprising. And I love the art style. That's the main thing. Like, I always have been a fan of, like, the art styles with a Zelda game. Like, they always try something new and different. And I'm always into that stuff, so. Mm, excellent. Like, all, all the Zelda games are so grand and uh, exciting. And just when you're going through the dungeons, you just feel, well, they usually make you feel smart. Yeah, some might not. Some make me feel uh, like I. I recently went back to Ocarina of Time because I got stuck in the water dungeon, and I tell you what, that did not make me feel smart whatsoever. <laughs> I felt so dumb. <laughs> they they do have that ability to make you feel mm. very uh, uh, very weak, very very yep. uh, for lack of a better word, like they can make you either feel like a god or just make you feel like. It, just even like last week, I was playing, I was streaming Breath of the Wild again. Like I restarted Breath of the Wild from scratch, and I beat the game. Right, I I I crushed the game. I have one save file where I'm like a god. I can walk around. I'm not afraid of anything. And it took me like so many tries just to beat a guardian. Now, mind you, I went after mm. the guardian when I only had three hearts, so he yep. did one shot. But like <laughs> back in the day, like when I first played, it was like. No, you don't even mess with guardians. Like you can't. You don't know how to beat them. You don't know what to do. Get away from them. And now it's like, it. it but it does. It just takes you from this moment where you feel like you're a god, and then you can just rip the rug out from underneath you in a second. Hmm. When I first went to, when I first played Breath of the Wild on day one, I was like, I'm going to go to Hyrule Castle. Bugger it. And as I'm going there, there's like 
four guardians after and I'm just like screaming <laughs> running away from these lasers it's so good and then you're a few hours into it and you're you know you're reflecting the lasers back at them just not even thinking about it it's, yeah that's it's the same like, thing like yeah. I one day I was just what I was trying to do was get the memories and I'm trying to mm. put the memories together and I run as I'm going through I'm trying to get the one that's kind of in front of the castle and I'm working my way through and then all of a sudden like I look up and I'm like, oh my God, there's the castle. Now, I haven't got the memory yet, but I look up and I'm like, there's the castle. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go after the castle. Like, forget the memory. Let's go after the castle. And I start running. And then all of a sudden, like, I see the light on the back of my head and the music starts. And I'm like, mm. oh, I'm screwed. And I'm like running, Maybe. running. And I bang one shot dead. And I was like, okay, well, we know not to do that <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Bobby, today we have uh, been graced by Nintendo Direct. Um, mm. Just fell out of the sky yesterday, got announced, and uh, happened this morning for me at night time for you. Yeah. Um, so let's let's jump in, into it and see what we uh, what announcements Nintendo made and what they're trying to sell us this year. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Well, let me ask you a question first, because you for you right now it's what it's Thursday. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. I've so it's the future too. for me. Is the internet still alive at this point, or have they burned it down? That's what I want to know. Uh, well, Australia, the internet's barely living anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't really makes, comment on that. Makes, makes sense, but makes sense. I haven't actually checked out the internet. I don't know what people's I know, opinions I know on people are upset about. Are. I know people are right now upset that there was no Animal Crossing announcement, so that's number one. Mm. They were hoping to get a date. didn't think about that, to be honest, yeah. yeah. They were hoping to get a date, um, and that didn't happen. Mm. Um, so I know that's number one. I know that that's... I mean, I could just real quick look and see what's trending at the moment. Um, of course, Nintendo Direct is trending. Um, it looks like some Fire Emblem stuff is trending. Yeah, Mario Maker 2 is trending. Uh, Tetris Battle Royale is trending. So it's some it's some interesting Tetris stuff. Tetris Battle Royale, that I is know. something, isn't it? It is something, man. <laughs> it is something. So mm. Yeah, because with Animal Crossing, that was one of the things I was looking forward to most. And I watched all of this, and I felt happy enough what was with, oh, uh, yeah. with what was shown. But... Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was I, it's... for me. For me, that's my that's my game this year. Like I know Animal Crossing yeah. will be my game that I. Although they showed me stuff today that I was just like, maybe it's not my game this year. Maybe it's going to be the game that I play in between some of these great games that are coming out. So I'm all in, man. I'm 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 excited for this. So yeah, well, you do a podcast all about Animal Crossing, so yeah, um, yeah. you're gonna absolutely love that one. Oh, that'll be, that'll be that'll be a blast. Talk about. Yeah, that'll be a blast. Yeah. I'll have all kinds of stuff to go over there. So. so they started off with Mario Maker 2. That's coming out in June. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they first brought out the screen, it was it was an automatic like yes from me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm glad that it's Mario Maker 2, not Mario Maker, you know, Deluxe or whatever it might be. Even if it yeah. turns out it's going to be. I mean, similar, let's but... be honest. It's going to be pretty much Deluxe. You know what I mean? Like they might add mm. some new stuff to it. They didn't really show a whole lot. You know what I mean? Like. And I, and really, what's the story to tell with Mario Maker? Like that's basically yeah. what you have. The only thing that I hope that they do maybe allow us to do worlds to some degree. Um, yeah, because that was the problem that I felt with Mario Maker. The nice thing about when you play a Mario game, you play level one one by one two. You learn like you learn some stuff in one one. You learn some stuff in one two. It's a progression. That's what I didn't really like about. Uh, you know, Mario Maker 1 was you would just like randomly just play these levels and it was like they were just slapped together and I hated yeah. the don't move levels and all that and like, there's a lot of troll levels. So I'm hoping that with this one, Nintendo absolutely learned their lesson from the last one and was like, let's curate this thing a little better. Let's find make it easier for you and I to find levels as opposed to last time. Like, let's have a true rating system where you know, people can rate it on a couple of things, not just one, and you know, and see what see how it goes from there. Yeah, because it was either uh, the hardest level you could possibly think of, or it was yeah. just like a, a music level. There's no just like, hey, this is a fun level to play. Absolutely, um, and, and hopefully, just... hopefully, if they do introduce like the worlds and stuff, you, they can say, um, we're going to make a mechanic, and you're going to build on it over five levels, and maybe the maybe the fifth level is going to be really hard. It's going to be one of those stupid levels where you got to like catch the shell. Jump off of it and all that. Yeah, but exactly. maybe it will teach. Maybe it will teach you in the first three levels or something like that. Yeah. Um, they started off the uh, clip with like the slopes. People have been asking for slopes in Mario Maker. Um, 
for ages and they never come in the update. So we got the slopes and they also showed off sort of the cat suit. So yes. I, I don't know if they put Mario 3D um, World in there or that's just New Super probably, Mario Bros with the cat suit. I'm they're probably sure. just giving you the power ups. They might have. It might yeah. be one of those things where they go like every power ups on the table. Like every single one you want to do is there. I can't see them letting us do 3D worlds. Do you? Like that'd be kind of crazy. No. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's. I think it's just basically market. they're just like, hey, if it was a power up, it's available now. Well, you know what? Technically, kind of, sorta. Didn't they have the car- Cat Mario? It was an amiibo though. Like you could scan it in. Um. There was like a. I think it was the. Uh... Like the skin, but it wasn't actually the power up. No, yeah, it wasn't a power. It was just the skin because you could get you hmm. could get Cat Mario and Cat Peach if I wasn't mistaken. Like you had to hmm. unlock them; they were locked behind like some DLC levels and stuff. But like that was kind of cool. Yeah, from what I'm watching here, it looks like it is 3D world, but it's just the 2D perspective. So yeah. it might have like the uh, um, like the backflip mechanics and stuff in there. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Mm. Looks interesting anyway. Um, so June, I presume that's before E3 or just like a couple of days after or before? June, um, E3 is typically the second week of June. So depending on what day in June it is, they'll probably, I mean, to be fair, they'll probably either launch it just before E3 um, or that'll be something that like it'll be in the E3 booth and then it'll come like hmm. maybe a week after E3 or something. Do you think we'll see another like a, uh one of those uh, world championships where they make the levels and that? Because if it coincides with this game, that would be a good sort of place to do I it. I would love it because I felt, and maybe mm. maybe I'm wrong, I felt like that was the most unbelievable moment in the, in the history of, you know, of not, I don't want to say gaming, but like in the terms of like the tournaments that Nintendo's put on, yep. dude, that whole final run, like I remember watching that live just screaming at the TV. Because I thought, yep, like, this same. is amazing. It was like these speedrunners were just ripping through it. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm all in with this. Mm. Like, a lot of people were complaining that Nintendo doesn't do the uh, conferences anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, the, instead of doing a businessman on the stage, they're doing a, a championship or in tournaments and stuff. Yeah. Isn't, that a bit, isn't that a bit cooler? A bit but, more fun? Let's be fair. Let's be honest and fair. The only ones complaining about the lack of a stage is the media. The fans love it. Yeah. Like, I yeah. love this production value that Nintendo does because, like, you see the Nintendo Directs, and they're they're good, but when they do the E3 ones, it seems like they ramp it up a little bit, like they do something a little bit special with it as mm. well. For me, I, I prefer the way it was because there's nothing more awkward. I mean, think about it. You look oh back God. to yeah. the January launch, right, the, the announcement of the Switch. It's the most awkward thing in the world. Like, it, yeah, was it was horrible. It was a shock, wasn't it, after we're used to directs? It's like, ooh. Yeah, it was like, mm. man, you should have just put a direct on. Like, that's mm. the canned produced thing. Because here's the other thing, too, is you have, like, you watch that today, right? You watch a direct today, and as they're speaking, they're speaking Japanese, but it, they have it translated right over top of it, and you don't have a problem. It's just, like, smooth. Where mm-hmm. at the other, at the conferences, they just be one person talking, then a translator. Talking, translator. It's like, okay. I appreciate what you're trying to do. This is not working for me. Like, let's move it along. So, I yeah. like I like the canned stuff better. But I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I do too. But like, do you, do you remember when uh, is it 2012 when I was showing off the Wii U stuff and Reggie's doing like the zombie U in the gamepad going rawr, rawr, yeah doing that thing? <laughs> it's, it's like oh my god. Yeah, it's like I don't want any of that. Like we can pass on this stuff. You certainly can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, next up, they showed off Ultimate Alliance 3, or Marvel Ultimate Alliance mm-hmm. 3. They showed off a fair few details on that. It's coming summer this year. Uh, oh. Winter for me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that's true. That's right. I forgot that's your reverse. Yeah, summer. Yeah, whenever I watch these directs, I've always got to do like the math in my head. Like, all right, summer's winter. Uh, <laughs> fall fr- fr- uh, fr- uh, throws me off because I'm like, you know, what is fall? Because fall's not a thing here. It's yeah. autumn. Well, so okay, so let me that? ask you this, because this is, this is a little different. <laughs> let me ask you this question. Which Direct do you watch? Uh, you, I watched the American one today. Usually usually they're the, they're the same, because uh, Europe, they're different as well. Like yeah, because Europe had one as well t- tonight yeah. as well. And I know mm-hmm. that Europe sometimes shows a couple things that are different than us, because yeah. maybe if they're getting some exclusive items with, like, j- just a hypothetical. I remember the year that they did the Mario Maker um, and Europe 
got a special edition Mario Maker where they got like a shirt and and all this different stuff. So in okay. their direct, they got a different looking. Um, they got that added in where we didn't get that mm. because obviously it wasn't coming. So it's yeah. it's kind of interesting. A lot of the time, it's just like it just shows different ratings and stuff. It's not too yeah. much different, but yeah, like for example, you guys didn't get the small new 3ds and yes. Europe and Australia and all that did. So yes. In those directs, they showed off the smaller one where yeah. you just got the XL. Yeah. Which was a shame because the little small one's really cool. We did get them later. Yeah, you did, yeah. It took, it took about a year to get them, and I literally went out and bought it right It was Animal Crossing. Mm. Happy yeah. Home Designer. I bought it right away, and I started importing, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, face plates. I loved it. Oh, I yeah. loved it. Yeah, was was only the Animal Crossing one available, or did they eventually just do the vanilla ones and you can change face plates? Only the Animal Crossing one. It's the only yeah. time they brought them out. They brought the one out... With, it came with um, Happy Home Designer faceplates and the game packaged in. And I was like, I'm mm. oh, in. They had two different faceplates. They had one that was like a bunch of different emblems. And then they had like Timmy and Tommy Nook or something like that. Like that was the uh, the two faceplates that they offered. Or it might have been Isabel instead. Um, I think it was Isabel. But anyway, the point was, was like they put that out and that was it. And that was the mm. only time it became available. Yeah, that's oh, that's the one you need anyway. That's yeah, the one that's, you would have yeah, gone was, after. <laughs> yeah, was, was, I'm good. I'm good with this. Mm. So Ultimate Lions Three, it looks pretty good. I'll pro- I'm interested in getting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really have a lot to say about. It. They're showing off like sort of the skill trees and all the different things you can do. Yeah, but I'm, I'm interested in. It. I'm keen to give it a go. What about yeah, yourself? Are you um, much of a Marvel guy? I, I'm not a big Marvel guy, but however, I have a lot of friends that are Marvel fans. I have a couple people that I like in Marvel. I like Spider-Man. I like Wolverine. And that's probably the extent of it. I like Colossus and, you know, whatever. But, like, I know they're just people that are, like, really in to Marvel. And a lot of them are my friends. I'm more of a DC guy. Mm. But, like, I don't care. If I get to hang out with my friends and play, then I'm good to go. So I'll give it a shot. Yeah, it looks like a great game just to sort of, like, yeah, do basic combat. Just yeah. do some button combos and that and talk to your mates and bash yeah. up some baddies. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. Uh, I do think the game looks better than it was shown at the Game Awards too. I don't know if it's just if it is like more advanced footage or mm-hmm. it's just uh, the, the scenes they've shown. But I think it does look a bit better than uh, late last year. It, it did look a little better than than the Game Awards, but they also announced Captain Marvel was going to be in this game, which I guess mm. it wasn't originally. Uh, so she'll be in it, and I guess that's to kind of coincide with the movie that'll be coming out at the time. So yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes uh, sense, right? Yeah. Uh, Box Boy and uh, plus Box Girl. Yes. Uh, I was surprised to see this series come back. Like, it, it, they had uh, three games on the 3DS, and now it's coming yeah. to the Switch. I'm uh, it's a, Yeah, it's a perfect game for the Switch, too. Sort of a couch co-op, doing puzzles together. Yeah, man. I have uh, I have the Box Boy Amiibo up on the shelf up here. Uh, oh, yeah, yep. And it's like it's it's a stu- it's a cube. It's the dumbest thing in the world, but it's like worth ninety yeah. bucks right now. Man, I'm like, oh my god! Well, I got I had to import it from Japan. It never came to the United States. Mm. I was like, I'm in, man. I love that game. It was just like you said, just a, a casual, laid back puzzler that you sit there and you play. Like I I love that game. I, I think it's yeah. and I like to have the have the new character per se, which is like a rectangle. Which I'm like, oh man, I don't. <laughs> this gonna be tough. <laughs> yeah, just trying to fit fit the uh, larger character in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But this one was also co-op too, so you could play at the same time. I thought, wasn't it? I think, so. yeah, yeah. So yeah. one's the uh, one's the girl, yeah, one's sure the boy. The... Yeah, yeah. It'd be a good game to like, if you're a fan of snip, snipper clips and games like that yes. to sort of play on the couch. It's going to be perfect. Yes, taking off absolutely. the Joy Cons and being able to share it that way. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Uh, we got a tease of a Smash update 3.0, but they didn't say anything. I know that was like, why did you even put it in there? It was like we're just going to talk about Smash, just to talk about Smash. But like, I was like, D- okay. So basically, you told us that Joker's coming into 3.0 update, um, mm-hmm. which is cool, you know. And and that was basically the end, or you know, the end of it. So yeah, yeah by the end of April, we'll have a Joker and this 3.0 update. So. Uh, what do you hope? What do you hope comes in this update? Hope like I assume it's going to be more than hey we balance the characters a bit more yeah. and like surely there's going to be they seem to be teasing it. So whether that means a new mode or I don't know what they're sort of aiming for with this tease, but 
I think basically, I mean, the updates are typically just, you know, they don't really give much in terms of, like, DLC or anything like that. Like, we'll mm. get the character, we'll get Joker, we'll get some stuff, but I don't feel like, other than Joker and his stage and his music, I don't feel like there'll be a whole heck of a lot. Um, I think that's the main crux behind it all, but balancing issue, you know, balancing and all that stuff. Th- yeah. That game, to me, like, I was never really huge into Smash, um, and my main whole focus behind Smash was the trophy hunting. I loved mm. collecting the trophies, reading about the characters, doing all that stuff, and it, like, yes. it's going in this one. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I honestly, man, as weird as it sounds, like, this game isn't grabbing me the way it's grabbing everybody else. But I know that everybody else plays the game for a different reason. Like, they're playing mm. it for the fighting game and all that stuff and the party mode and all that. The online's not the greatest. Like, you get one match where it's fantastic, and you get one match where it's just like, dude, you're moving at two frames per second, and it's, like, horrible. So I can't play it. I can't play it online. Well, you know. And it, make, it makes me feel awful, too, because, like, I'm playing against someone, and, and I, I just know they're thinking, oh, this guy's so shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I know I can be a bit better than this. I'm just, like, I'm, put, I'm pressing the button, and it's just it's, it's not uh, doing it. Yeah, oh, I know. It's, it's just rough. so frustrating. It's rough. It's rough. But when they were talking about the update, the first thing that came to my mind as well was trophies. Uh, I'm a type of player that plays Smash for Smash, play mm-hmm. play the actual game, play it for you know items off, play it with my one on one with my friends, and that I'm that type of player. But I really do miss the trophies because like the spirits, I find myself like, huh, who's that? I don't know. <laughs> I can't like it doesn't yeah. have any more information. Yeah. L- like maybe. They left the uh, trophies out to sort of save time to be able to add the um, DLC. Yeah, yeah, add all this stuff. Maybe, maybe now that the the game's out and DLC's on the work, maybe they should, well, not they should, but maybe they could get another team to maybe start putting some of these trophies in. I wish, I wish, man, I really do, man, because that's the thing for me that like, like you said, like I used to find out, like I would just read the history of Nintendo, mm. like. Hey, I don't know what this is. I'm going to go check it out. I'm going to go see who this character is, what his history is. And then like if you found a franchise because in in on the on the Wii U version of it, you had the trophy cases. And you go mm. in and you like see these empty holes and it was like, "Oh, I got to find I got to I'm yeah. liking reading about these characters. I'm going to find out these other characters are missing." You know, like F0 and all these different characters that I really didn't know a whole lot about. It was just nice to just pull them in and read about them and stuff. Yeah. Like, especially when they they get rid of the mo- modes what in the Wii U version, like Trophy Rush. I really enjoyed uh, Trophy Rush being able yeah. to, like, smash the crates and trying to get as many oh, trophies as you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that stuff was fun, man. It was all great. Mm. And another another mode I really want to see back uh, come back, which is hopefully in this up- next update, is the uh, custom stage builder. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's missing. And in the Wii U version, you're able to... All these weird modes came out of it. Like, there was a mode called Smash Ball. Mm-hmm. We've got to like try and s- smash them through the hoop to uh, finish yep. them off. Yep. And I actually did one where there was only like a couple of blocks at the bottom. It was on the big stage, and I set it to jetpacks. So there's no ground, but you're just jetpacking around, and you're uh, fighting just in the air. It was so much fun, especially <laughs> playing as like someone like Donkey Kong who just does a big down smash when you're <laughs> just flying around on jetpacks. It's so good. And you can't do this uh, that one in this. And I'd love to do it. To, like do some. Maybe like videos on it, or just yeah. like play it online. It'll be so much fun, and absolutely, it's not absolutely. available in the Ultimate Smash Brothers, which is frustrating. Yeah, that no, makes sense. Hmm. Uh, so next up, uh, they talked about Captain Toad. There's a free update, so now it's two player. Yes, and there's also going to be paid paid DLC uh, coming March 14th, and the uh, the free updates actually available today. Yeah, um, don't know a lot of stuff. Or... There was a lot of stuff that was like that. Like, hey, it'll be available later today, and I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. Mm. It was really nice. And yeah, especially when they said Captain Toad is now two player, I was like, oh my god, what a perfect mm. two player game. Never You're... even thought about trying to make Captain Toad two player. Absolutely, man. This mm. is the perfect. This is the perfect couch co op game. Like date night with your girlfriend, just chilling mm-hmm. out, hanging out on the couch, just playing together. You know, like that was. You know, a game like Mario, that they, that game is not a two-player couch co-op game. Like, you're fighting no. with each other, you're testing the balances of your relationship, you're ready to kill each other. Like, that's how me and my ex-wife were. Like, we would get on there, 
And it was like, <laughs> yeah. we really should be married. Like, look how we're acting over this game. <laughs> it's like, but with that game, it's like there's no pressure. It's kind of like there's a couple pressure levels. But for the most part, it's just kind of laid back, chill. Like, I, I love mm. that. I love that they added that in. Yeah, because, like, my girlfriend, I, as far as I'm concerned, as far as video games go, she's a lost cause. I don't try to get her into video games. She doesn't. Oh she, she, do, she doesn't. She doesn't <laughs> see them. But when they when they said about two-player Captain Toad, I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. This is one I'm actually interested to, you know, hand her a controller and see if she can have a go. Does she play because Animal Crossing? Uh, Captain Toad. No, no. See, oh, but does uh, she play Animal Crossing? Uh, no. Um, get, get her on it. I, I'm on the switch. I, w- I will. Okay, okay. I haven't had a um, Animal Crossing hasn't. The last one came out in 2013. So yeah, yeah. So that was a while ago. Um, okay. Yeah, probably the console would be a great place to do that too. Absolutely. Man. If you can run around together on the same console, which probably knowing Nintendo and what they're doing with the Switch, that probably will be a thing they'll do. Possible. Um, Possible. They're doing a lot of co-op stuff now, so it'll yeah. be cool. Yeah. So I'm really keen to get into this two-player, give it a go, and see yeah. if. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm with you on that one. Like, I, and I, and I like the DLC stuff. I loved the uh, the Mario Odyssey stuff they added to it. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm like, yeah, man, give me more of this. Because mm. I I, actually, I missed Captain Toad on the Wii U because um, when it came out, I must have been doing something else or playing yeah. something else, whatever it might have been. But I always wanted to give it a go. And when it came at the Switch, I'm like, all right, perfect. And I fell in love with it. I think it is a really underrated first party Nintendo game. It's Absolutely. so good. It's it's. I will tell you this: it is better on the Wii U than it is on the Switch, because Just with for the controls, yeah. Well, with the controls, because when you're playing with the Wii U, you had to tap, you had to, you had what was going on in your hands, plus the television at the same time. And there was a couple of things where you had to move blocks, and you could just tap them with the stylus. And this one, you have to try mm-hmm. to aim and move at the same time, and it's not that easy. Yeah. Tapping the blocks and making the the color blocks move were really nice. I play a lot with the uh, just in handheld mode, so mm-hmm. I don't run into that too much. Just do like a quick touch or whatever. But um, it is it is a bit awkward, sort of aiming the pro controller yeah. as a cursor. But it's, it's it's not too bad, I guess. But yeah, the Wii U gamepad was made for that game. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, next up, we got Bloodstained, um, Ritual of the Night. That's mm-hmm. coming out summertime. Uh, I haven't really been following this game that much, but it's gotten it is worse. Something I'll be interested in having a look. Yeah. It's, got, it's gotten worse. If you go back and look at the original early mm. showings of the game, it really looked good. And yeah. now it feels like a PS2 game. And mm. it's not... I'm losing interest as we go along with this one. They're going to have to it, really yeah. ramp it up and pull it back to me. Because I'm not... It is a, it, yeah, it is a bit worrying. Um, just obviously the, uh, the pedigree of like Kickstarter uh, um, projects that have happened yeah. in the recent years with a lot of these big developers going off doing their own version outside of like the company and the property. Uh, obviously, this is uh, uh, going back to uh, his roots in Castlevania. So, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's um, not, it doesn't, it doesn't mm. feel like it should. You know what I mean? To me, to me. I yeah, don't are know. you a big, are you a big Castlevania fan? Um, I'm not a huge Castlevania fan, but I do enjoy Castlevanias. Like, I don't... Like, let's put it this way. When I see one, I don't go, like... I don't lose my mind. Like, I gotta have it. I look at it and I go, okay, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy it. And then when I'm done, I'll walk away from it. Like, that's how I was with uh, Simon's Quest. Like, I loved Simon's Quest. The yep. first one and the third one were like, eh, okay, it's okay. Um, but I am... I'm, I'm slow... I'm quickly turning around to be like, I'm enjoying more of these games. Hmm. Yeah, like I'll I'll see what the reviews are before I give it a go. I think yeah, it's one of I'm those definitely games. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I like the uh, the sort of character design, but yeah, apart from like in the uh, the world where like it swoops up upside down and the gravity, I can see like a fair few interesting mechanics they're going to use in the game. But we'll yeah we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> see if they got <laughs> enough. See if they got enough money to actually fund it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, next up is Dragon Quest Builders 2. It's coming July uh, 12th. That's uh, all I wanted to see today. That's all I yeah, wanted to see. I, I, I posted on Twitter. I was like, if I just see uh, yeah, Animal Crossing. <laughs> if, if, that's the only thing I wanted to see, apparently. No, but I, I, I try to keep my expectations in check. 
I had a feeling we weren't going to see anything Animal Crossing today, but I was like, okay, what do I really want to play in 2019 that I don't know anything about yet? And Dragon Quest Builders 2, like, I love the first game. So, I'm ready for this one. Like, I'm, I'm like, sign me up. I actually got the, the Japanese demo just to try it, to see some of the differences. And it wasn't that easy to play. I had to keep using Google Translate to try to figure out what was going on with mm. the story and all that, but I'm in, man. Like I'm, I'm sold. I want it so bad. Yeah, I'm. I'm not a big Dragon Quest guy. I'm interested in Eleven, but uh, Dragon Quest Builders doesn't really interest me that much. But just seeing what they're uh, introducing from the first one it looks like a huge upgrade. Oh yeah, you know, what you're getting. It looks. It looks really impressive, actually. Yeah. Um, has me more interested than the first one did. The first one just looked like, hey, it's got a bit of Minecraft and a bit more and a bit of Dragon Quest sort of mixed together. Yeah. But this one looks like a lot more Dragon Quest than a uh, it's say Minecraft. So it's yeah. like it's like Minecraft, right? But they give you missions, which is awesome. That's what made it fun for me because it'd be like, okay, you you take what you enjoy about Minecraft, and then you go, hey, by the way, I need you to build me this chair, or I need you to build mm. me this kitchen, and all this stuff, and that's what truthfully made me fall in love with that game because i was just like it's the it's the best of both worlds it's like and and the cool thing was like as opposed to typical rpgs your fighting didn't build your experience your building gained your experience so you would go out and fight enemies and that fighting enemies just got you ingredients and stuff and then you would take them back to your to your castle and build stuff out of it, out of what you were accumulating. So it's a different spin and a different take on an RPG as well as Minecraft. That's what I enjoyed about it. Hmm. Now it it does uh, look good. I'll uh, when the demo comes to the Australian eShop, I'll give it a go. Yeah, you got to get I it. I think check it out because I don't have a Japanese account. I should probably make one. Yeah, it, seriously, they're easy to make. I got one for all three yeah. territories, man. It's that way I can just grab stuff. And especially, listen, well, not so much a Japanese one. But if you're definitely, like, if you're doing reviews or you're getting review codes as time goes on, it's best mm. to have that because the the North American codes, they're going like that. But if you can go, hey, I have a UK account, they can just give them to you and it's no, no big deal because everybody wants the United yeah. States ones for whatever reason. I mean, obviously, because of English stuff, but they speak English in the Europe, too, so... Get an account. Do. <laughs> yeah, I do have a European account just for yeah. like for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I've had a couple of European codes, but yeah, haven't had the Japanese one yet. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So Dragon Quest Eleven as well, Definitive Edition S is coming this fall. Uh, I was surprised when this popped up. It actually looks really impressive. It doesn't look too much different than the PS4 version. Yeah. When they were like riding on the horse to the field, I'm like, oh, that's actually yeah, really impressive. For, it, like on the Switch. To me, yeah, it looked it looks way better than the 3DS version, no doubt about that. Um, but it looks mm. like closer to the PS4 version. Um, and I've been waiting. I didn't buy the PS4 version for this reason. Like I'm ready for yeah, this, same. so I'm in, man. That game launches. I'm 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 110 in. Mm. And you're able to swap it to the uh, the uh, sort of 8-bit sort of aesthetic as well. Uh, like the the 3DS version was going to have the the top screen. And uh, as like the modern than the bottom screen as the uh, the eight bit wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and like it looks like the Switch version is doing that too. I don't know if the yeah. PS4 version does that. I assume it doesn't. No, but... I'm assuming that. But I thought that. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a novelty. That's something I want to live in. You know, I yeah. want to play it. But I think it's kind of cool to be like, hey, I could play this the old classic way, or I could play it the new upgrade way. I like that. I thought it was kind of cool. The other thing I like about it is they took on the the idea of kind of like what Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee did where it's not randomly generated battles. Like you could pick and choose who you fight. So if there's there's an enemy that's giving you a hard time, you can avoid them. And then you can go after the ones that like, you know, that that interest you, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, that's great too because a lot of those games, if you're just going through the field and one pops up, you're like, oh, damn it. It's just nice to be able to run around them. Or if you're grinding, just like seek them out and go and yeah, yeah. get them, yeah. Uh, so next up is something I'm sure you're very, very excited about. It's uh, Disney, uh, was it Sum Sum Festival? Uh, this, this was the most exciting uh, one on the direct for me. <clears throat> Cannot wait for a bit of a Disney festival. This is why um, I don't like Australians. This right here is why <laughs> I don't like Australians. The sarcasm. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The very... Heavy sarcasm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, it's good. like you can tilt your switch on the side. You can make it a mobile game. It's just what uh, it's, it's what I'm after anyway. It's day, it's um, day one purchase for you. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll be there with your with your little Tsum Tsum hats on and little oh absolutely stuffed animals on your shoulders and stuff as you're playing. Yeah, this is this. I saw this and I was like, just please move on. Don't even show me this. Just just keep going. Yeah, I thought exactly the same thing. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> uh, next up, there's <laughs> there's an update to Starlink. Uh, so Star yes. Wolf's coming into Starlink. Yes. Um, obviously, it's a Switch exclusive. It's coming yep. in April. Uh, Starlink's one of those games. I'm like, oh, I, I do want to get that. Uh, I think uh, recently it was uh, like $36. So um, cheap right now, man. Around so EB cheap. Games and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So cheap right now. If you don't have this game, dude, you gotta go get it. Like seriously, mm. this game. Yeah, I and, go and, get it. It looks great. and it's so cheap just for not only that, just just to have the Star Wing, you know, or, you know, or the, the mm. R Wing. I'm sorry, to have yeah, the yeah. R Wing. Like it is, just that alone is worth the purchase. You know what I mean? Like it's a cool little statue of it. But then the play and actually, oh, it's so good, man. You gotta get it. You gotta get it. Mm. And and with the update, yeah, what... with the update, like listen, there's our Star Fox Racer. There's, you know what I mean? Like, it was, they showed the racing in it. But, like, I, they, there's a lot of stuff to this update. Like, a lot of cool stuff is being added to this. So I'm in, man. I'm, mm. I'm, I love that game. It shows uh, Ubisoft must have a lot of faith in this because if this is exclusive to the Switch version and, like, the other version is just being left out, m- the Switch version must have been, like, the biggest seller. Like They said it was. They said that the Switch version sold more than the other versions. Mm. So, which, I mean, made sense, right? You would think, like, Star Fox is probably yeah. one of the biggest franchises in terms of, like, space exploration. Like, yeah, you have Star Wars, but they don't typically yeah. do stuff like this, where it'd no, be, no, like, no, have, have yeah. th- like, they wouldn't do so where it's like, oh, this is exclusive. Like, they wouldn't go to Ubisoft go, okay, make the Starlink game, and we're going to give these exclusive characters for this one particular version. That's not going to happen. So hmm. the minute that they announced it, I think there's so many Star Fox fans out there, especially with, like, Star Fox Zero not being that great. Yeah. When you get this and people get step up and they're like, oh, man, sign me up. And then it's as good as it was. Like, dude, it was really good, man. I... I thought the voice acting in it was phenomenal. Uh, the graphics and the style and all the game, it's it's so good, man. Got to get it. Got to get it. Yeah. I'm definitely going to keep my eye out now because I was interested in the Star Fox stuff before and just the general combat and flying around the ship and taking on bosses like that. But now this update mm-hmm. um, is coming out. That's definitely a push. Uh, I did miss, though. Is this a free update or is this a paid update? I actually That part missed I that. missed. I don't know. I mean, I would pay for it. I could care less. But I I don't know I, I really couldn't tell you on that one. Hmm. And well, regardless, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, next up, we got Rune Factory Four Remastered. Uh, I, I missed the initial title, so when I was watching this, I was like, "God, this looks dated. It looks like a 3DS game." It is a 3DS game. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Rune Factory. Are you into uh, the Rune Factory series? Yeah. I, I dabbled on it in DS, but nothing too yeah, much. Yeah, nothing, nothing major. Nothing to get me excited. I was just like, whatever. This was another one that came on. I was just like, okay, I got you. Let's let's. Because yeah. it's at one point I just hit this point where I was just like, come on, go, go, go. I want to see because I was. You start to hit that point. You're like, I want to see something great. You know what I mean? And it's like, so it was just kind of push along. But yeah. Nah, yeah, this I, middle bit definitely slowed down where it was yeah, like, hey, yeah. the, here's a Disney factory, here's a Rune factory. Yeah, too yeah. Ma- yeah. Yeah, too much, uh, too Def- much whatever. Definitely slowed down a little bit there <laughs> in the middle. Um, because like, I, I'm kind of confused with the Harvest Moon series now because Harvest Moon, the, the original team's gone to uh, it was a Story of Seasons. Yes. And Harvest Moon's become pretty ordinary now as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Well, as far as I know, um, around people who actually play the games. Um, so I'm. Um, I don't know if these Rune Factory games are good anymore either. I'm not sure if there's any fans out there of the series. Uh, contact me on Twitter. Let me know because I do enjoy these games. Obviously, we're talking about Animal Crossing and Harvest Moon yeah. and uh, Rune Factory, and that are in a similar vein, but obviously a bit more combat with Rune yeah. Factory. But it'd be interesting to see what uh, Rune Factory Five looks like when it comes out. Yeah. Uh, so there's a. RPG from the guys who made I Am Setsuna. Um, just uh, forgot the pr- pronunciation of it. Was it o- Oni Akani? You're, yeah, I get Yeah, perfect. You I think I butchered it. that, but <laughs> no, you nailed uh, you it. Can look. You're good. 
<laughs> you can look it up. This uh, this looks pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, I like the art style, but I wish they sort of lent a bit more into that sort of anime-ish art style. It looks a bit, a little bit still 3 ds if if that's a way I can put it, if yeah. you can uh, remember the footage. Um, it does look interesting, though, how you could go into the, there's a the living world and the beyond, and how you can mm-hmm. sort of switch beyond dimensions, sort of like, a bit like Link to the Past or Twilight Princess. It really reminds me of Twilight Princess when they go into yeah. the beyond. Yeah. And you're like, you're trying I, to save uh, spirits. Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of I Am Tetsuna. Lost Fear kind of, it lost me. It, it, it really wasn't that good. <laughs> yep. uh, but I Am Setsuna was a great game. So for me, I'm I'm on board. I love this team. I think they do fantastic work. Um, so I'm in. I'm definitely in. Mm. I think I am too, depending on when uh, when Pokemon lands, when uh, Dragon Quest XI lands, all these huge RPGs. Yeah. It's, like there's a only... I could probably only fit probably maximum three <laughs> in yeah, a year. That's so, a problem. <laughs> so it just yeah, depends when it lands. But yeah, it looks, it looks pretty good. That's the hardest thing. Like there's so many big games hitting in terms of like, um, in terms of RPGs. You got to think of it. You got Final Fantasy IX hitting today. Final Fantasy VII hitting later this month. And then you got mm-hmm. Dragon Quest XI, and it's just like it's just one after the other after the other. It's like, oh my god, man, I can't keep up with this stuff. But you know what? That's the world we want, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like when um, people are saying, oh, like this Nintendo Direct, when's it coming? It didn't come in January. I wasn't fussed at all. I had that many games in my backlog. It wasn't even funny. So yeah. this this could have waited till next month. It didn't really I'm with bother you. me. I, could, I was like, oh, I'm good, man. I was yeah. just happy to see the people that were predicting it were wrong week after week <laughs> after week. That was that was making my day. Just watching all these guys, just like every single week, like, guaranteeing it's going to be this week. And it's like, nope, not this week. I was like, I just love you guys looking like fools right now. So <laughs> it was all good. That, yeah, but that leak that came out, uh, was it? Late, it was late last night for me anyway. Uh, yeah. Like Mario Maker 2, and a, a few of these things were right. Yeah. Which was pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, they went over Yoshi's Craft World, how you can sort of get costumes for coins and things. And there's mm-hmm. a demo that's dropping today as well, yes. which I'm keen to go and jump into. Yeah, me um, too. Lo- Definitely. Really looking forward to Craft World. Uh, Woolly World was great. Um, Yoshi's Island, obviously, from the SNES, and mm-hmm. all that was awesome. So I'm really looking forward to jumping into this. Yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah, I don't really have too much to say on that. That's, uh, nah. I mean, it, look, it's, it's been known for a while. It, yeah, we know it was coming. It was another one of those ones. Like, okay, I know it's coming. Day one purchase for me. Let's like sometimes they put stuff in these things. It's like I don't need to know no more. Like it's a Yoshi game. Like what more do I yeah. need to know about it? Like let's just yeah. So that's that's my main thing that ever happens with it. Mm, like uh, they should have announced a battle royale mode, but. uh We'll get to that later. Another game's got a battle <laughs> royale mode. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, this is the uh, the biggest one. Fire Emblem Three Houses yes. was shown and given a release date of July twenty sixth. Mm-hmm. Um, really looking forward to this one. This is a this is one when they shown at E three. I'm like, oh, Fire Emblem's really stepping it up graphically. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you go down to the battlefield and you can see all the troops and that behind yeah, you. Yeah, man. Uh, they outline the story and a few of the mechanics in this. How you're. Uh, you can choose uh, one of the three houses or the three lands or regions or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And uh, you're pretty much at school and you're going through trials and you're trying to pass school. I reckon that's awesome. I th- it's, um, it's it's Fire Emblem uh, Harry Potter edition. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, pretty much, yeah. yeah pretty much <laughs> like you, that, you, know, yeah. you pick your, pick your uh, house Slytherin or whatever you want to pick. And, you know, but it's, uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely interesting to me. I'm, I, I like Fire Emblem. I like that this... I was very worried that they were going to kind of do very similar to what they did with Fates, where you're buying three different games. It yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't sound mm. like that's what they're doing. Um, but regardless, like, I loved Fates. I thought Fates was fantastic. So if it, this is similar in, in theory, like you pick, what, depending on which, which house you pick, you get a different story, I'm okay with that. But it doesn't sound like that's what this is. It sounds like it's one story, but you're just going to kind of pick which, which way you're going with it, you know? But yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, God, defi- yeah. I'm definitely in on this one. Mm. Like we, we've we've sort of uh, the grid based turn based combat of Fire Emblem. I'm not a huge fan of it necessarily, but I love everything else around it. I love the characters yeah. and sort of the story. So I try and like get through it. 
Um, a few other animal, well, not Animal Crossing. I've got Animal Crossing on the mind today. I, I, I'm with you, man. I'm with <laughs> you. I'm with you. By the way, um, the uh, the Yoshi demo, it's actually up right now. Awesome. Yeah. I'll be playing that afterwards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I was a little distracted for a second. I was just downloading everything. <laughs> I went in there and I was like, I got the Damon uh, X Machini, whatever. I got that one. I got Tetris. Uh, Final Fantasy Nine. I'm like just download a bunch of stuff. So, but yeah, it's it's a, the Yoshi one is actually available now. So, how much is? Uh, how, oh, sorry, how much is? Uh, yeah, um, Final Fantasy Nine. Twenty. Twenty oh, bucks. Twenty. Yeah. So it might be thirty here in Australia. I'll yeah. check afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad price, honestly. Twenty bucks. That's not bad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So Fire Emblem. This hopefully this is going to be. Uh, the one I really get into. I, I liked uh, Awakening. Um, yeah, Awakening. I didn't good. get all the way through it, but I really liked it. I loved the characters. And, yeah. Um, so hopefully this is going to be the one that really draws me in. The crazy thing was I played Awakening, right? And I was just like, oh, this game isn't gripping me. I can't figure it out. And I'm, But I kept playing and playing and playing. I was like, I like the story, but it's just not gripping me. I don't know what it is. And like, but I kept playing. I was like, and I started to really fall in love with it. And then something, some reason I just stopped. And then my mm. stepbrother one day was we were talking. And I was like, oh, I got this fire. Emblem. He's like, I love fire emblem. I'm like, here, take it. You can keep it. Just take it. I played as much as I played of it. I, I enjoyed it. It's good. He's like, dude, do you realize you were like right at the end? He's like, why don't you just? And I was like, I thought I had ways to go. Like I thought I had so much further to go. And I was like, mm. I just had the time. It's like, damn it, I should have went back. So yeah. whatever, whatever. I'm bad for that too. Just like, oh. Something else to play with. Yeah, Forget yeah, about yeah. the other game and put it down. I'm going to try and be... I'm, we did. We actually did an episode of games we've got to finish a couple mm-hmm. of uh, weeks ago. So like this year, I'm like, I've got to play this, got to play this, got to play this, got to finish them. Yeah. Um, because it it, uh, it haunts me in my sleep. I don't blame, <laughs> I don't blame you. It happens to be sometimes too. Mm. Uh, so And also today we got Tetris 99, which is an online Tetris game where 99 p- players are playing... And there's only one winner, so mm-hmm. sounds a, a lot like a battle royale. Sounds um, like Fortnite. Sounds like Fortnite to me, and I'm in. I am and so. You're, bu- you're so, building too. You're building a big wall. Yeah, I'm. I'm, yeah. I'm in. I'm. I'm. I, I man, I love Tetris, and I love I this too. idea. Yeah. I think that like I, I'm not the greatest. I can hold my own. Um, I'm not one of these guys that are just like destroy everybody that I play. But I would love to see like how I stack up and what they do. And I hope that they kind of keep the competition level. Like I, th- I hope that it's one of those things where like you play to your level. You know what I mean? Like it's not like every single time you play, there's this, these people that like <laughs> blow you away. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting. What I'm curious about is this. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'll be playing it shortly. But I'm curious about like if I wipe out a grid. How does it determine who that goes to? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah, if I if I hit a Tetris and it throws the blocks to somebody, how does it determine who gets those blocks? Like, is it the... Yeah, the, good you know point. I mean? like, There's that's a, yeah, 98 other people it can go to, yeah. Yeah, it can go anywhere. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's mm. Very interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, I'm keen just to pick it up and be like a quick pick-up-and-play game. Yeah. Because, um, like, Peri Peri Tetris was that for me for a bit. Yes. And, like, that online, you're like, yeah, I'm pretty good at Tetris. And, like, I don't really know much about Puro Puro. But, like, other, like, the Japanese people that come on, and they, they chose to play Puro Puro, and you're playing Tetris. And they just absolutely demolish me, stri- like, all, like in five seconds. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, them people, listen. Crazy. And I, and I say them people, that's, that's not right. The Japanese people, <laughs> they are <laughs> monsters when it comes to any type of game. Like, they just, mm. and especially puzzles. Forget about it. I'm not playing yeah. you. Like you, I feel bad for you because your region's kind of there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're in the same uh, the same, the same time, time zone. zone yeah. So when you're playing, yeah, like much. you you jump on a play Splatoon, you're playing them, and it's like, yeah, and it's I tell you what, they there's, scary at Splatoon. There's two different mindsets of gaming when it comes to Splatoon Two. Like I used to when I was playing Splatoon One, like I would wake up in the morning, and it was like I was playing all these Japanese kids early in the morning. And their style of play is totally different than Americans. And yeah. it was like, they're like literally hiding in ink and just like jumping up and shooting in. It's like, I mean, <laughs> like, there could be a little swatch in the corner. It's like, you can't fit nothing in it. Nope, they're in there. They're just hiding out. It's like, oh, you got to be kidding me, man. It was brutal. Mm. It was brutal. It took me a while to figure it out. <laughs> 
one of my most proud gaming moments was uh, playing like a room full of Japanese people in Mario Kart 8 uh, Deluxe and winning and I took a <laughs> screenshot of like the end screen it's just like an Australian flag at the top but everyone else got the Japanese flag I'm like oh my god <laughs> and they are good dude they are so yeah. good I'm, I'm telling you everything that comes out if I see like I won't, I'll just leave I'll be like no we were playing Splatoon 2 one night and I had guys on my team playing with me that were like amazing and this mm. one Japanese kid came in and he was just wiping us up. Like <laughs> I could hold my own, but this dude was just wrecking. Even like the best players that I had with me, they were wrecking them. And I was like, all right guys, that's it. We're done. We can't do this no more. This is it. Oh, no, but at least the, as long as they're on your team, it's all okay. That was fine, but it was, it was never yeah. lining up that way. It was always him on the other team. I was like, mm. I can't stand this guy. No more. I can't <laughs> Uh, next up is on the, uh, the direct list is Dead by Daylight. Uh, <laughs> doesn't I, I'm I'm not really a big uh, shooter zombie guy. Um, yeah, no. So this this wouldn't grab me anyway. But no. uh, you can definitely tell on the Switch the uh, graphics are very dated. Oh yeah, or very it bad. very dulled down. It looks pretty ordinary. Yeah. Um, I'm all about third party games coming to the Switch, but the these games like say stuff like Wolfenstein Two and all that like. If you have a PlayStation or an Xbox or a PC, there really isn't much reason to sort of get these on the Switch. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of a catch-22 as well because you, you do want these game, these big third-party party games on the Switch, but uh, it's just not the platform for them, I feel. but I My thing is this. If I could take the graphical hit, I don't mind taking the graphical hit. Like, you look at Doom... It's very difficult. Let's be honest. It's very difficult when that game is running to tell the difference between the Switch version and the Xbox version or whatever. Like, yeah, everything's moving Doom, so Doom fast. Does it really well. Yeah, yeah, everything's moving so fast. You can't really pick up the textures because in Doom you're not stopping and smelling the roses. You're just flying through at a hundred miles an hour, destroying everything. So for mm. that stuff, like I get it, I understand that. But like when you're playing games like this. It's just like that hit is a bad hit. And mm. like you look at uh, Mortal Kombat 11, and I can see some differences in that game. But at the end of the day, I go, it's still really good. And I'm getting it portable, and I'm getting it whatever. So I'm in. Wolfenstein, same thing. Like there's a slight graphical hit, but it looks really good. And it's like, hey, man, I get to play this portable and, and at, at home. But a game like this, it's like... No, this is a bad hit. This is a bad port. It's just not good. Mm. So, yeah, it'll, like it'll be interesting. It comes out fall, so who knows? Things might change by then. But yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's it's just not my type of game anyway. So yeah. it doesn't really matter if it has the best graphics in the world or not. Really, yeah. Don't do anything for me either. Yeah. Uh, next up is Delta uh, Delta Rune uh, Chapter One from Toby Fox. The uh, creator of undertale mm-hmm. uh, that's coming out the 28th of this month uh yeah i didn't check this out on pc so i'm pretty pretty happy that this is coming to the switch i don't know it was free wasn't it on pc and i don't know if it's f- gonna be free on switch well, at first sure it said what... it was free and then at the bottom i thought it said it, it won't be free so i don't know it confused me it did some double talk there yeah the, the, the trailer just threw like a fair bit of stuff out yeah, <laughs> just like the, putting the dog everywhere and all that. Yeah, I'll just I'll play through the trailer as we're going now and see what the what the pricing is. But it's um, at the very end. It's like all this gibberish, and I thought it said like it's free, but then you read it, through, then it's like in quotations, real small. It's like, but it won't be free or something. I don't know, man. It, it, mm. it threw me off. It was so hard to tell. It it does say for free, so okay. Yeah. Uh, then it says more chapters in currently in development. Um, then it's going on. Sorry, I'll just scroll back there. So more, there's going to be more chapters in development. Uh, so however that works, um, as far as pricing goes, that doesn't matter. I can't get back there. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Um, for free. Maybe that stuff won't be free. Maybe the additional content won't be yeah, free. Yeah, yeah. And it says more chapters will, are currently in development, then it has in brackets, will not be free. So yeah. chapter one is going to be the demo, then they're going to be releasing chapter by chapter. Yeah. You're going to be paying for it. Which is an, it's an interesting way of doing it. You must be doing this game uh, episodically. So you're going to be playing it chapter by chapter. I guess yeah. that's so you can get it out earlier. 
Possibly. Possibly. Mm. Because maybe his Undertale money might have ran out, and he's like, "All right, I've got to start putting stuff out." <laughs> I, I doubt that. that <laughs> he's making money hand over fist on that game, man. So yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Undertale was obviously a uh, indie darling, which uh, exploded and came out on the Switch last yeah last year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my my co-host Bryce, he's a huge Undertale fan. He he loves it so much, and he's always telling me to uh, play it through again. I'm like, "All right, I've played it once. That will." That'll do. So like, no, you got to do the other the other side of it. I'm like, no. Yeah. no I started to play it. I was just like, no, I can't. Feel, I, I I think I need to try it again and just take my time. It just didn't. It didn't grab me at all. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Yeah, it's one of those. It's, I guess it's one of those games where if you're into like that sort of earthboundy quirkness. See, I love Earthbound. I, yeah. I I love Earthbound, but this one just I don't know what it was. It just didn't do it. Mm. Maybe it's a Fire Emblem situation where you got to uh, keep trucking, keep going through it. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's possible. Yeah. Uh, next up, they've shown off Damon X Machina. There's a demo today. It's releasing summertime in the US. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. This it looks really cool. It's looking better yeah. and better every time they show it. Every the art time really I see it. Yeah. Every time I see it, and what they showed today, I was like, yes, 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 yes. Sign me up all day long. Like, I'm in, man. I'm in. Yeah, I am too. Looking forward to playing the demo today. Yeah. Uh, next up, there's Grid Autosport. Um, I feel like everything that's... Like, I, I absolutely love Forza. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I feel like everything... Every, every, it just makes everything else look a bit ordinary. It um, does. It does. I feel like Nintendo needs to find its Forza. Um I know mm. that there was conversation a while back about um, Bandai Namco bringing Ridge Racer 8 to the Switch. It was going to be mm. Switch exclusive. And I feel like that'll probably be the one game that's going to give Forza a run for their money. Um, but yeah, this game, like, it interests me. Don't get me wrong. I'll probably pick it up because I think I'm always kind of chasing that Forza tale. Um mm. I, I I want a game that's very similar to Forza on the Switch because I, I love I love racing games like that and Forza just does it right. You know what I mean? They just yeah. they really do it right. Forza Horizon, the motorsports one is, eh, but the Forza Horizon they they nail it with it. Yeah, I love Horizon. I yeah. actually uh, like two and three absolutely loved, especially three. That was yeah. based in Australia. That was awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and like in in this game, they've got the demolition derby and stuff. So um, I feel these modes could be really interesting, apart from just the standard races. Yeah, um, I'll be keeping an eye on this one just for uh, see what the pricing is and see what it's like. Yeah, before I'm with jumping you. into it. There was another game on Switch. I forgot what the uh, racing game was, but it was ported from mobile or something. And uh, in Australia, they're asking for like ninety something dollars, like it was ridiculous. So if they get the pricing right, I'll be interested in this one. This is true. This is true. Hmm. Uh, this one really surprised me. Um, I had no idea this could run on the Switch, but Hellblade, sending him a sacrifice. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's coming spring. Like It looks random, good, too. But, yeah. Like, graphically, it's like it's it's held up really well. I, I don't when know I, how, because it's such a stunning game, too. Yeah, when I saw it, I was like, holy crap, this looks really, really good, man. It's mm. I'm in, man. I'm in on this one. Like being able to play uh, in handheld mode with the headphones on would be great. Like, yeah, man, in, in bed or uh, I don't know, it'd be kind of a weird game to play on the bus or something like that. You're in, yeah, <laughs> you're just hearing these whispers and stuff. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that one. I actually I haven't uh, touched it on PlayStation or Xbox, so um, it is on Games Games Pass on Xbox One. So is it? Yeah, so it it's probably more tempting just to play it on Xbox, but. Uh, if you're a, if you're a Switch owner, it's definitely a um a good way to play it. I think. Hopefully, I agree. Hopefully. I agree. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Uh, they went into like a little uh, quick little rapid fire bit where they showed off Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, you are you into Mortal Kombat much? Not really. Not, not really. really. I'm not when, either. No. When they, I, I love the Inju- Injustice series, so yep. I, I'm hoping that this game sells well. Because I think if this game sells well, then it means we're going to get Injustice. No doubt about it. Injustice 3 will probably come. Um, so I'm excited for this. I, I, honestly, I can't wait. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, give it a look. I think uh, this this was a funny one. Unravel two is coming March twenty second. Okay, uh, is it me <laughs> or did it look weak? Uh, I I can't really remember. What do you mean by look weak? Like, like the actual game itself or the it port? Looked, it looked like a downgrade. Like graphically, it looked like a downgrade compared to hmm, Unravel two. Is. I mean, but it felt like it was a drastic downgrade to me. Maybe I don't know. I, I, when I when I watched it, I was just like, I don't remember it looking this bad. Um, I'll have to see more of it. Yeah, at e at e three when they announced the game, I'm like, oh, is this game coming to Switch? And they yeah. they they actually said no. It's uh, a bit much to run on the hardware. Yeah, and I I kind of I kind of sort of chuckled a bit at that because there's that yeah. many co op platformers on the Switch, and you're literally playing as a blue guy and a red guy, yeah. which are like the two Joy Cons. Yeah, and the game didn't come to Switch. I kind of just went, all right, EA, because EA, their yeah, support yeah, of the Switch just, and, and it wouldn't surprise if this would be a lesser game, and then it won't sell well, and then they'll go, oh, that's why we don't put stuff on Nintendo because you guys don't buy it. And it's like, no, dude, give us good games. Like, yeah. why is Sims Four not on the Switch? Like, it makes no sense to me. Put games that'll mm-hmm. sell there. Like, this game, I thought like day and date, this game would have sold. No doubt about it. Like, you didn't bring it out for, it's been, what, six, seven months since it launched? Might even be almost a year by the time it actually hits the Switch? I don't yeah. know, man. I don't know. Especially back when, uh, with FIFA, um, back in the launch year of the Switch, that was pretty shocking how they just had, like, they had, like, a completely different version with, without the story mode, without, yeah. like, with missing lots of things. Yeah. And I did, I did buy that version, but... So did I. So did I. Yeah. And I'm not even a FIFA guy. I'm just like, I'm going to buy it because I want to support it, and I'm hoping that they'll bring more stuff over. And I was so disappointed in it. I was like, so, wow. Yeah, and like nothing's happened since. And I'm looking mm. at the footage now of Unravel. It it has taken a fair bit of a hit. You can sort of see in the grass and the, the water effects, it has taken a huge hit. Yeah. I guess in fairness, though, in on other consoles, it is a really stunning-looking game. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it looks like... I, I feel like they could get it running better than it is, but... That's what they've got, so. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Mm. Uh, we got the Assassin Cre- Assassin's Creed 3 and uh, Liberation Remastered. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so um, I you, got did Assassin's you play Creed it on, the Wii U? on Wii U. Yeah. What were, what were your thoughts about it on the Wii U? Um, yeah, it was all right. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, was I, did, a... I, didn't, I didn't love it or anything, but it, it ran well. From uh, the bit I played, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, did you play it on Wii U? I played it on Wii U, but that was my first Assassin's Creed game ever, and yep. I had never played an open world game at that point, and I had no clue what the heck I was doing. I was just so lost in the whole thing. Um, now, after playing Breath of the Wild, um, I feel like I have a better grasp on the idea behind an open world game and, and a game that's like where you can like just bounce around the world and stuff. So I'm interested to try this game again. I love the Revolutionary War. I love that time yeah. period. Um, so for me, it's just like you know, I'm I'm very interested in it. Hmm. Yeah, and you'll be able to play the uh, the Vita game as well, Liberation. So that yeah. Be... yeah. <laughs> uh, then they then they showed off the Final Fantasy game. So Final Fantasy VII is coming March 26th. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to this one on Switch because I I didn't pl- I haven't played Final Fantasy VII. Uh, that's a classic I want to catch up on this year, so I'll be getting that one. Uh, the Chocobo Mystery Dungeon, that's on the 20th of... I've just written the 20th, I assume it's the 20th of March. Um, and then we've got Final Fantasy IX that launched today, which we talked about earlier, which yeah, you man. can get for $20 US. Um, then they went on to uh, a Celestial Chain, is that what it is? Um, yeah. Yeah, when they... I when this uh, cutscene started, I thought it was going to be Sin and Punishment. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. like, oh, a new Sin and Punishment game, but then it like rolled on, and obviously it's a <laughs> platinum game. Uh, it looks really cool. I'm looking looks forward good. to this one. It looks, it looks awesome. good, man. It looks very, yeah. very good. When I saw this, I was just like, yes, like, oh my god, so much yes. Like this game, <laughs> really, really. Um, it reminded me, because when I started watching it, I started seeing the the battle mechanics and everything. I was like, it reminded me of Bayonetta. Um, 
And then mm. the graphics are just, dude, it, it looks good, man. I'm happy with it. It I, does, I'm, doesn't it? I'm yeah. like, give me I this love game the art now. style. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. Mm. Yeah, so I can't wait for that one. Uh, was it? Did they say 2019? I think they. Yes, they did at the end. Just 2019. Yep, just said 2019. So it was a definite. So yeah, I'm yeah. That's a uh, near the top of my list. Absolutely love that uh, art style. Uh, and last of all, we got a Link's a Link's Awakening remake. Mm. When they started, when they started this cutscene, I saw the waves and that. I'm like, oh, is this uh, is this what I think it is? When it showed Link, I'm like, yes, yes. When it showed the gameplay, I'm like, oh my god, oh. how adorable. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I literally, when I was watching, you see the boot, you see the storm, and I'm like, okay, what is this? You see in the boot. And then when they show the one scene where it was kind of behind his head, and you could see the ear and part of the hat, and I was like, oh, my God, is that Link? And I, like, just pause. And I'm like, (laughs) and then also you see Link, and it's that old school art style. And I was like, Oh my God! Yes, please, yes. And then boom, they started unveiling it. And I was like, I love this game. This is awesome. Mm. Like I, I really wish uh, they put a date on this one, and it was like in the first half of this year. I really don't want to be looking at this game all year and just waiting <laughs> for it in say in September or something. Be prepared because it'd be, it'd be a perfect game to be like, hey, this is a Link Link's Awakening remake. It's coming say June. I think that would be perfect for it. But now we're going to be waiting for this game for eight months or something. It's going to be... True. You're waiting eight months. It's not going to come to the end of the year, Drew. Just relax. (sighs) Just just, just sit back. (laughs) Christmas time, you'll be sitting there in your your PJs under the Christmas tree, playing it, happy. That's when you're going to... It's going to be out. I think it'll be... I think it'll be fall holiday. Yeah, I, I think so too. It like just it looks like a natural toy box when you're watching it too. Like oh, everything's got that plastically, so... plastically sheen to it. Oh, so everything just looks man. like a little toy. It's awesome. When I saw so... this, I was like, "Now do Link to the Past. Give me Link to oh the my Past." God. And mm. I would be like, oh, "Yes, man, I'm in. I'm in." Mm. I do like some something in me does sort of wish it was its own original game rather than yeah. just a remake. Yeah, but. Uh, obviously, having a Game Boy game to a Switch game, it's going to oh. be so much different. I yeah. don't think it's going to matter too much. Let me ask you a question. Because mm. my Discord was lighting up with this question when we first started. Where do you think price range it comes in at? Mm. Yeah, because this is more akin to a 3DS game. Sort of yeah, thing. man. Yeah. Uh, I think it should be... Well, I'm going to say Australian. So Switch games, like Mario Kart, everything's $80 Australian. Okay, it's 60 so, bucks for me, so about $20 more. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I think it would be great if they can hit the um, $60 for me, $40 for you price range. That's that, not like, bad. Bit che- like yeah. that, that 3DS sort of um, price range. Yeah. But I think Nintendo has shown that they do want their games to be viewed as premium and they yeah. do just they do just chuck it straight up to the eighty dollar price yeah. range. Like New Super Mario Bros. Uh, U Deluxe, that could have been like, hey, it's just a it's just a, it's a two D Mario game. It's easy to jump into. It's a port of a so six year old game at this point. It'd yeah. be great if they put it out for you know forty dollars US, uh, sixty Australian. But they put it straight up to a premium price. I don't think that they can get away with premium price on this. I mean, I know that aesthetically, like, okay, so if you have the game and the game's running, it's just a matter of swapping the palettes. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not, to me, I don't view that as, oh, that's just real simple. But I know it's not as difficult as some would think it is. Mm. It's, it's, it's not an easy chore, but it's not the most dis- difficult chore in the world to do. Yeah. So as long as you have the original coding, which I can't see why Nintendo would ever scrap any of that stuff, but as long as you have the original coding, you're just basically swapping out the sprites for this. And I think they could, I mean, it's probably a year, two year job, um, a, probably a really small team, relatively small team. I really don't think that this game comes in higher than 40 bucks. I don't think it can. I, I, I think anything higher than 40, they're going to have a hard time selling unless, and and with a game like this, sign me up, man. But I would love to have like a super collector's edition, some really mm. cool stuff. Like if that's the case, I mean, I think that's the way they need to lean in to get like, let's be honest, man. If they put out a special edition switch, 
like a Zelda Switch with this. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, I'm buying Build, another Switch. All about it, yeah. I'm buying another Switch. You know, but mm. if they gave you like a nice, hey, could you imagine like a gold Switch with a gold dock, gold joint, man. Oh, a gold dock. Now that'd be that would be fun. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, mm. I'd be all in. I, yeah. I do hope it is a. I do hope it is a, a one of the cheaper games, just so Nintendo feels like they can do quicker turnaround games. Like yeah. you know, just like Breath of the Wild, that take that takes six years to make by the oh, time yeah. it's started start to finish, and it takes millions of dollars, hundreds of people. Uh, I do want to see these types of Zelda games come out where it's like, hey, we can take a year and a half on a Zelda game, absolutely you know, half the amount of people, and we can charge less because it doesn't cost as much to make. I want absolutely. them to sort of. Ex- yeah, explore the scale of how much they can charge for their games now that it's, they've got the digital shop. Yeah. And we're missing the 3DS too because like a few years ago, this Breath of the Wild would have been the Wii U game. This would have been the 3DS game that came out the year after. And now it's all the same console. So they sort yeah. of, they need to be able to um, make the games, uh, some of these games cheaper so people like a kid or someone can get into Zelda like this. It's yeah. obviously, this going to be a lot more simple than Breath of the Wild. Yes. For a, for a child to jump in and play, so I agree. Yeah. I agree completely. I'm one hundred ten percent. I agree with you. Yeah, cannot wait for it. Yes. So this is going. This is the uh, first half, essentially, of the Switch lineup. Are you happy with it? Um, and what would you like to see sort of uh, come this year to sort of fill out the Switch library? I mean, obviously, I want I want Animal Crossing. When does mm-hmm. Animal Crossing hit? <laughs> I feel like Animal Crossing is a spring game. Um, and now that they've kind of announced that a lot of this stuff is hitting in the middle of the year, it makes me a little nervous of when actually uh-huh. Zelda will hit, or not Zelda, but when, when Animal Crossing will hit. Because my hopes were Animal Crossing would hit uh, March, April. Then I thought, ah, oh, you know, June's a good time because that's when New Leaf hit. Now it's sounding like it's going to be more toward the end of the year. But honestly, I'm okay with that. Like, I feel like they're very um, heavily loaded up front. So it'll be mm. it'll be interesting, to say the least. Yeah, the the the, uh, the first party game that's uh, coming out the latest is Ju- July uh, twenty six, which is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah. So it's going to be August onwards at least. Yeah. Um. So they obviously didn't have anything to show here. Uh. Yeah, apart from yeah, apart from the, the games we mentioned, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, the only I'm, thing, ha- I'm happy with it. I think the only thing we haven't heard yet. I mean, we'll hear from Bayonetta. That'll be one. That's you know. That'll be one that they're working on. Hopefully, that'll hit by the end of the year. Uh, hopefully, that don't get pushed to 2020, but we'll see. Mm. It, it, it is making me a little nervous to hear when a lot of these games are already starting to get pushed a little bit. Um, I don't feel like Nintendo can... Um, I don't feel like Nintendo can keep delaying a lot of games. They need to get stuff out there for people. Um, yeah. But I do like the idea of, like, they have a lot of demos on the eShop tonight. You know, that that's something that they haven't done in the past. So they're saying, like, hey, you can play the first world of, of Yoshi, and you can play four levels of, of Damon, uh, Damon X. And, it, like, that's really good stuff to me. Like, when you hear that, you go, like, this is this is awesome. This is what you want, you know? Mm. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, I'm ha- I'm happy enough. I'm I'm not blown away like with the list of games, but it's a, it's a great it's a great uh it's a great start to the year, and hopefully uh, yeah. at E3 we get whether it's a brand new game announced or Animal Crossing is their big yeah. game. Absolutely. Mm. What uh, Nintendo franchise would you like to see revived for the Switch? Uh, Kid Icarus. This, this question comes from uh, Jamie Penning in our Discord community. Kid Icarus. All day long, oh Kid Icarus. Yeah. Um, I don't want Uprising. I want I want a two and a half D, two D, side scrolling similar to the original Kid Icarus game. Um, orchestral music, just really bring it home. Um, I love that franchise. I love that series. Uh, probably my second favorite franchise in the you know, but it. It's always disheartening because they really didn't. It's only been three games, so I would love yeah. to see Pit back again. Like really going to it. I didn't like Awakening that much. I felt like Awakening was kind of like Space Harrier, um, you know. So I would love to see them go back to the oh, basics. You mean up, Uprising? Uprising, uh, Uprising, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uprising, I felt was a lot like uh, Space Harrier. So I would like to 
get them away from that and kind of going back to the basics for me. Hmm. I actually, I actually loved Uprising because uh, Pit became my my main uh, Smash Bros. brawl. Mm-hmm. So seeing him come to life in like a full three D game, I actually loved that. But I do agree with you how going back to uh, sort of uh, Kid Icarus's roots would be really cool. To see the that the controls were horrible too. Like, yeah, they weren't great. Kick, yeah, he had to have that kickstand and like. It was weird, and he was in the stylus, and it was like, oh, just, man, just stop with this nonsense, you know? <laughs> like, I hate that mm. about Nintendo sometimes. Like, they try to get this thing, and mm. it's like, no. So, maybe <laughs> maybe that's my problem with the game. Maybe if they, if I didn't have to the kickstand and, do, and mm. play that weird way, then maybe I would have enjoyed it more, but I don't know. I feel like if you look past that, though, it was a fantastic game. Like, the story, the yeah. voice acting, the multiplayer oh, the voice modes. Acting was, was so good. The voice was acting awesome. was fantastic, man. Really good. Mm. I, I would I would actually love to see uh, that that type of game come back to the Switch. I'd, I'd like to see what you're saying as well, like mm-hmm. the original Kid Icarus, sort of re uh, reimagine that. But also, I'd lo- I'd love to see a sort of uh, the more story and character focused version of Kid Icarus. Yeah, really like it. I'm, I'm I agree. Mm. All right, Bobby. Thank you very much for coming on the show. We've been going for an hour and a quarter, so <laughs> better end it there. <laughs> That's a little, little bit of a longer one. I mean, thank you for having me on, dude. This this was a lot of fun. I uh, the first time we ever met, first time we ever talked. Yeah. So I appreciate it. I would, you know, love to do more in the future sometime. But man, this was this was a lot of fun, man. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. It was a lot of fun. And yeah, likewise, the doors are always open to come on the show again. Uh, maybe we can get you on when my co-host Bryce is on as well. He's actually he's on leave at the moment because he's just had a child. So. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Just say the word, man. Anytime, anytime. Will do. Uh, so do you have any plugs or anything you would like to leave our listeners? Go and check out your stuff. Just, yeah, please go check me out. Instagram, Twitter, at Nintendo Gurus. Um, go over to the YouTube page, Nintendo Guru. Um, look me up on iTunes or however you get your podcast. Just look up Nintendo Guru. Check out a couple of the podcasts, and uh, hopefully there's something there. I do enough. So hopefully there's something mm. out there that you'll, <laughs> that you'll like and, and, and gravitate to. So. Yeah, you've you've just done a uh, a review on a uh, Bluetooth switch speaker. Oh yes, the Ojo. Yeah, so go and go and check that out. I'm sure that took a lot of time to edit and yeah, it was all that one. fun stuff. So go and get as many views on it as you can. <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right, guys, thank you very much for listening to the House of Mario episode 82. We are a part of the Eight Bit Collective, ten podcasts and twenty two podcasts podcasters coming together to uh, fill your ears with some cool audio content. You can find me on Twitter at iDruby and you can find the show at The House of Mario. And uh, yeah, that's all. You can find us in the Discord community, which is linked in the show notes below. And everything Bobby just said, you can find his stuff in the show notes as well. All right, guys, we'll see you next week and uh, keep happy. (laughs) 